Hi kids, welcome back. Today is week 29, day two. And our highlight verse for today is Nehemiah 9, 1, 3. So let's look at it in our Bibles. We'll look at the King James Version first. Nehemiah 9, 1 through 3. Now, in the 20 and fourth day of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and with sackcloths and earth upon them. And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law of the Lord, their God, one fourth part of the day. And another fourth part they confessed and worshiped the Lord, their God. Now we'll look at it in the NIRV version. Nehemiah 9, 1 through 3. It was the 24th day of the, of the seventh month. The Israelites gathered together again. They didn't eat any food. They wore the rough clothing people wear when they're sad. They put dust on their heads. The Israelites separated themselves from everyone else. They stood and admitted they had sinned. They also admitted that their people before them had sinned. They stood where they were. They listened while the Levites read parts of the book of the law of the Lord their God. They listened for a fourth of the day. They spent another fourth of the day admitting their sins. They also worshiped the Lord their God. This is the word of the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. Great job. So what does all of that mean? Well, our book says, when Ezra read God's word to the Jews, they were reminded of the sin of their ancestors. So let's look at that. Ezra, who was he? He was the priest that read the book of Moses, right? The book of the law. And as they were read, as he was reading it to everyone, they were reminded of what their ancestors, what's an ancestor? The people who came before them, their families that came before them. So they're their ancestors and they were reminded of what they had done, how they had sinned against God how they had disobeyed God's word and they didn't follow him and they followed after other gods. Because of reading the word, they were reminded of their sins. Now they understood their need to ask God's forgiveness and to repent for their own sins. Because of the words of the law, it made it clear to them that they needed to repent they need it. What does repent mean? It means to turn away from. It means to not do the same thing you've been doing that you know is wrong. To change your ways, right? They understood that they had to ask God's forgiveness. So they said, God, please forgive us for what we've done, what our families have done. Forgive us all our sins, and repent. So we have to repent from our own sins. We can't repent for someone else, but we can repent for our own sins, how we have disobeyed God. So, and then we look at what we've done and say, oh, we got to live differently. And we turn from that and do what God has called us to do. And that's to obey him. Right. And so the last thing is the Jewish people devoted more time to God's word than confessed and worshiped. So they spent a fourth of the day hearing the word and then a fourth of the day worshiping and, and confessing, right? They confessed and they worshiped. So that's really a great way to think about how we should sometimes take more than just a minute to read God's word. We should take, we should set aside a little extra time for him 
right? Isn't he worth it? Oh, he is so worth it. All that he has done for us, right? Can you think of all of what God has done for you and for your family? I ask, I think you should think about that. After Ezra, the scribe, read the scripture in celebration of Jerusalem's restored wall, the Israelites were convicted by their ancestors' guilt and failures. The people dug deeper into the word. They praised God, remembered his majesty, and repented. Amen. Okay, so how can we apply this to our life? we must understand our sin problem. We all are sinners. We all have that. Jesus paid the consequences for our sin, and so God will forgive us. So we have to know we are all sinners. You, me, all of us. There's not one of us that is not, okay? But we also know that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He paid the price, right? And that was so God would forgive us and that we could have a life abundantly and live with him in heaven for eternity. So the activity here uh, in your book, if you have it, is to follow the path to write each letter in the correct circle. Now this would be, very difficult <laughs> to do without the book. So I'm going to give you a challenge instead. Think about the way God has provided for you, right? Did he give your mommy and daddy a job? Um, did he um, give you a, a good school to go to? Did he give you clothes and food? Now you're going to say mommy and daddy gave me that, but not always comes from our father first. He is the giver of good things and that you can take to the bank. Okay, now let's respond in prayer. Jesus, thank you for paying the price for my sin so I can be forgiven. Amen. Now it's time for our memory verse. Nehemiah 9.6. And we'll look at the King James Version first. Nehemiah 9, 6. Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. Thou has made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth, and all things that are therein, the seas, and all that is therein. And thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. Nehemiah 9, 6. Now we'll look at it in the NIRV version. Nehemiah 9, 6. You are the one and only Lord. You made the heavens. You made even the highest heavens. You created all the stars in the sky. You created the earth and everything on it. And you made the oceans and everything in them. You give life to everything. Every living being in heaven worships you. And that is the word of the Lord. Let us give him thanks and praise. Amen. Okay, have a great day. See you next time.